What up guys, it's Justice here, and it's good to be back. The key influences of why I'm back are Friends, the Steam launch, ARC update with the Auth and Dig site, and the upcoming new solo duo boss release in December. Work and other life commitments will make videos and streaming very sporadic, and currently it really is just a spur of the moment thing. I have been locally recording whilst playing for the past two weeks or so, uh, two to three weeks, and yeah, there's like 80 gigs worth of uh, footage stacked up, and so I just want to kind of mash this together into a nice video for you. It will be kind of RuneScape 3 progress styled, and yeah, let's just get straight into this. Just a quick note, this video is a mix between PVM and skilling. Hell yeah. Just as has earned the Guildmaster qualification at the Archaeology Guild. Progress is being made. I'm going to go and buy the outfit. Alright, so I'm just getting uh, the 240k notes out of here. The Dragon Matic, I'm going to keep that in there. And I'm, I've also got a buy offer in the Grand Exchange currently for a load more Crow notes to, to make the Time and Space Matic tomorrow. So hopefully I should have enough notes um, by sort of the afternoon tomorrow to be able to buy that. So yeah, I need to buy the Energized Meteorite Shard, um, and then I'll be able to uh, use that with the uh, Imkando uh, Matic, as well as another Dragon Matic, and then that'll make my Matic of Time and Space, which looks absolutely epic. Definitely one of the best looking tools in this game. Uh, but yeah, this Master Archaeology outfit, the set effect is absolutely insane. Alright, let's buy it. So go with the hat first. So yeah, this is costing 250k chronotes, which currently um, is a value around 41 million GP. Um, actually, a bit more than that, a bit more than that. About 50 million. Alright, sweet. Complete an achievement, own the Master Archaeology outfit. That's pretty satisfying, getting achievements, not going to lie. But yeah, let's, let's wear the outfit. And uh, we'll see what this looks like as well. So we can check this outfit out. Awesome. That does look really good actually. I'm pretty damn satisfied with that. Let's, let's go outside and have a look. Definitely one of the best skilling outfits I've seen in game. So the outfit, uh, the Master Archaeology's outfit, set bonus when you wear all five pieces, 7% increase to excavation success rate, 7% increase to screening success rate, 7% increase to matic base precision, increased speed when restoring artifacts, increased speed when screening soil, increased duration of archaeology consumable items. Uh, that's pretty nice actually, so the XP boosts. Uh, three uses per day of the fixate ability, which guarantees an artifact of your choice from an excavation. That's probably really nice if you're just having to finish off one for maybe a mystery or a collection log. Uh, unlimited teleports to archaeology dig sites and collectors, so that's the big one. So yeah, I can quick teleport, configure, I just want to configure, quick teleport destination, no quick teleport destination selected. Uh, okay, so I can select one of my choice. Well, I guess I'll be selecting the Orthon for now, due to that being the latest content. Nice one, and then we can use the Orthon teleportation devices. That makes it easier to explore the map. Uh, the graphics team did a fantastic job of the environments uh, when it comes to archaeology and it comes to the dig sites. The Dragonkin, um, Oh, my favorite race in this game and any lore to do with the dragonkin i'm extremely fond of um it's 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 lore which really keeps me engaged uh, i've always enjoyed the lore behind the dragonkin and when i went to runefest one year uh, i've been to runefest twice i think in total and uh, i think it was the first time i went they had a stone of jazz uh, near the entrance of the runefest event all right guys so I've been doing a lot of archaeology and before I stopped playing the game I was stacking up a lot of artifacts from the level 100 spot I think it was in the Warforge. Uh, I have like 62 Dorgshan Spears, 64 Forged in War Sculptures and then a few other little things and I have been farming uh, a few of the artifacts from the new Orthon dig site. So what I'll do, I'm just going to calculate using this calculator here on the RuneScape wiki. Uh, I'm going to input all the damaged artifacts that I've got uh, that I need to restore and it's going to work out the XP that I'm going to gain and the materials needed. Okay, so I've inputted all of the damaged artifacts that I've got in the bank that I can actually restore uh, from my understanding. Uh, most of them are within the Warforge as expected. So just uh, between these two, I've got 2.2 uh, mil or yeah, roughly 2.35 or so. 
So in total, XB, I'm going to gain from this is 3.4 million. That's pretty damn nice, uh, considering I think my like current XB right now is 18 million. So that's a substantial portion of my current XB. It's actually now only going to cost me 18 million um, additional cost. So yeah, I've got a bit of an issue. Um, I wanted to go and check out ED1 because I've heard it's really, really good money right now. And even for me, I'd be aiming for just three runs an hour. And I feel, you know, once I got used to it, I could achieve that. And at three runs per hour, it's still supposed to be good GP per hour. So I wanted to go and check it out and put it into the vid. Uh, big issue though, I have the Inquisitor staff that's tier 80. And that's best in slot for places like Solak, where it's purely a melee based boss fight throughout the entire fight. And even it works on roots, etc. But not Erethor, by the way. Um, but when it comes to just world content or like other content such as the elite dungeons where you've got multiple mobs uh, different styles of combat and even the bosses aren't necessarily melee based melee type that's when it becomes an issue because then it's just a tier 80 staff and not a tier 97 odd staff due to the convoluted system of invention i'm unable to just let's say sell my best in slot setup for solak which is a high-end boss and then just go and buy some decent gear maybe even best in slot for some lower end content or for like elite dungeons you can't do that because you augment your gear it becomes untradeable uh, and it just becomes this absolute hassle and even when you want to go and buy some new items for a different piece of content you're then gonna have to really perk it up because perks do add a decent amount of power onto your gear so it's something that you're gonna have to do and yeah it just it just all becomes really convoluted you just can't it's not very flexible so i'll just have to do with this for now one thing which is pretty cool is that because I've got the Aerithor's Grim Grimoire now, which I am going to go into at some point if I ever record me doing Solak, um, you can actually have that. It actually unlocks it as a cosmetic override for your offhand. So now you can see the the uh, Grimoire there, which I just think that looks badass. So I'm pretty happy about that. Also, I do have the Essence of Finality amulet now, which is pretty damn cool. So that combines the Amulet of Souls for Soul Split healing, as well as the Reaper Necklace for increased accuracy, um, both in one as well as uh, allowing you to add a special attack to this item. Uh, in this case, I've added the Claws of Guthix, which is the Guthix Staff, which again decreases the defense levels of the monsters that you're fighting. And just overall, it's just it's a huge amount of damage now, especially at Solak, where I'm using basically a tier 97 staff with the Inquisitor um, staff due to the effect it has on melee type uh, monsters. Uh, and the Guthix Staff damage turns into damage as if it's a tier uh, 97 weapon so you're hitting like 15ks with the gothic staff spe special it's, it's so much fun but that'll be in another clip so luckily i do actually have uh, ed1 as a reaper task as well so i've just started this like my first solo run pretty much i did it on release i think ages ago okay so we're coming up to the first boss and i've been told basically by a mate of mine xj that it's well and truly worth because of the loot that you can get from this place it's worth buying the fishy treats for about 2.3 mil or so I'm getting absolutely shredded right now though. Uh, and then you can just basically skip out this first boss, which is an absolute pain. So yeah. Never done this before, so use it on it. There you go, sweet. Now, I've been told as soon as you get to the second boss, that's when it's worth putting your aura on, if you're going to be farming here for the hour or so. Okay, finally figured out the mechanics for this boss fight. Basically, it's just run away from everything. <laughs> It is literally just run away from everything. I, I thought the magic attacks that were happening in phase one could hit me anywhere, like they would just fly to, but it turns out you can just run away from them. Um, so yeah, and then this, once you get past that bit, then it's all uphill from there, because then he just alternates between these range attacks and then the magic attack where he leaps into the air. You can just pray, pray switch it, so it's not too bad. Ah, finally. Okay, he's dead. Good times. That is pretty much the dungeon, all right. So I'm gonna finish it and see what loot I get uh, after I solo this boss, which, yeah, uh, might be quite difficult with this gear. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. But how cool do those flames look? I think it's because of the light in here. That looks really, really cool. Damn, the 15 year vet cape, guys. Tier 85 orb, tier 90 seismic one that I've had for about six years. I don't know why I'm doing that. Oh, what is that? Oh, those fucking things spawned under me, guys. Yeah. Well, I kind of get the... F I've only ever sold this once uh, on release, so it's starting to get back to me now a little bit.
mean, geez, I just got some massive hits there, to be honest. I've done it without even going down. I mean, so obviously I can't ever get a good rotation, but... And fight's over. We did it. Wow. New personal record. <laughs> I don't I'm I am i not I don't even care. Like I'm gonna upload it. I don't even care. I don't even care. Alright, I mean honestly not that bad. Just rerolled the challenge as well, so I can get some bonus XP there. I mean, I just got awarded 137k XP there for the daily challenge, so I'm going to get that again now as well. So it's going to be really nice XP. I also really like this update with skilling. It can, it shows you an ETA of how long it's going to take to complete the restoration of these artifacts, and then it's also stacking up my XP there to the right. It would be really awesome to reach 120 arc, um... Because I think it's going to, I mean, just to be able to get that extra relic power. So double XP is coming again, uh, returning November the 6th uh, until the 16th. And you're going to be able to have 40 hours uh, of XP. And you can use that at whatever pace you wish uh, to kind of prevent no lifing, um, which can be really unhealthy. So, all right, guys, so not too bad. Uh, 4.7 million XP. I managed to gain there from that stint of restoring artifacts. Now currently level 104 archaeology. So I've actually just bought a bond um, in order basically to get Rune Metrics Pro. I mean, I really thought long and hard and I thought, you know, can I just track my XP there? And to be fair, like when I'm PVMing, I really do want to start tracking my damage and my DPM so I can actually, you know, use that to improve whether at a boss fight and also a benchmark against, let's say, my duo partner in Solak to, to see kind of how much damage I am doing in comparison, as well as kind of my DPM when basing compared to DPSing and try and improve my rotations and the speed of the kills, you know, like for efficiency. I mean, it is really fun to track your damage during fights because that way you know how you, you know that you've improved your rotation. Yes, you kind of know by maybe killing the core faster at Solak as an example, but to actually see the stats, you know for a fact then where you're improving and you can reflect and okay yeah i used an extra two thresholds there due to maybe using that limitless sigil where i didn't and therefore it gave me extra damage so and in every other mmo i've played i've been i've been able to do that really easily without spending in-game money for an add-on or you know paying uh paying jacks themselves through the website for an add-on even even with this as well um you know this is still limited to just only your damage and you can kind of work out what other people are doing but the only way of tracking and benchmarking yourself against let's say the group so you can all help each other improve is by putting a gem down and even those gems uh you'd have to put a gem down for every single fight if you want to track the damage just for that fight from my understanding you know maybe with experience you could maybe calculate uh and divide it but that's just an absolute faff like you don't want to do that and a dpm and then overall damage across the fight right that's what you want but you want to be able to just have a list of all your teammates and be able to track that you know there's a very common add-on used in world of warcraft called details that does that for you uh the difference is they allow uh, blizzard allow third-party websites uh, third-party add-ons to be installed uh, and they are community driven at the end of the day um so it saves blizzard having to do it but at the same time, you know, they have to open up the game to allow add-ons to, to work in the game. But they do have final restrictions on whether they allow those add-ons in the game. Okay, you've gained one month of Room Metrics Pro. Some features will not be available until you log out and in. Okay. To be fair, how much are Tectonic Energies? Because if they still are that high, they actually are still. So yeah, it still is like 20 mil an hour at Virago Duo, Duo um, which is pretty sweet. One thing I definitely want to see, guys, is like oh, the the GE improvement. Um, I came back to the game for archaeology, and the GE update came out, and it's just incredible. You can now have favorites saved here, and um, so you know I'm gonna build this portfolio up over time. Right now, I've just got some basics. I don't know why I've got these in there. So incandescent energies I've got in there, obviously for uh, making the sign of porters for archaeology AFKing. I've got the vulnerability bars uh, bombs that I'm constantly buying right now, which also was a fantastic update.
uh, you can use it now with various different styles and not have to uh, not have to switch to magic or when you're meleeing you can still apply the bomb onto the target um, and death from above scroll obviously for the ripper demons uh, which was another fantastic update ancient summoning obviously the power creep was insane on release and they had to nerf the ripper demons but yeah pretty cool i really like this update it's much more responsive now as well so i just wanted to pick up on this really quickly have you noticed like the detail on this i'm bet that's a uh, mtx pet there's like no way that isn't an mtx pet i can i can just vouch for it right now i'll do some research but like the detail look at the eye detail and everything i mean when you compare it to actual in-game pets that you can get this is definitely up there in terms of like the effort that they've put in and the animations the movement it frustrates me in games, uh, and I heard Asmongold uh, raise about this recently, about a transmog set that's just came into uh, the Blizzard game World of Warcraft. Uh, for the first time ever, they're actually selling now transmogs, uh, which is basically like, you know, what I'm wearing here, like keepsake kind of outfit, cosmetic override. Um, most of the time you've had to grind those in game, and it's the first time they've actually uh, released that in a shop now. All right, so guys, just killed the... Um was the second boss in the uh, instance for the third time new personal record um obviously that's still really slow but didn't die so that's positive all right guys so just as a quick kind of recap of what's happening here so that personal record there's from the last boss fight in ed1 against suru i think you pronounce it uh so the original time was 18 minutes got that knocked down to 10 minutes now on my third kill uh, a few things, so I had to go and buy Tectonic again, I've also bought a offhand Seismic Singularity which I've put um, Flanking 4 on currently, I know I need to put like Flanking 3 E2 really on it for the content that I'm doing, but I just couldn't faff with that, I just needed to get on with the content. Either way, improvements and pro progress is being made. I also made a quick change due to uh, a tip from RS Rav around using Rack and obviously Water Spells, so like Ice Blitz. Um, or ice barrage effectively the crystals on top of Sura when you're going through that phase they can be frozen with ice spells once they're frozen your rack ability does a lot more damage and so you can just keep cycling through racks every other gcd make sure to use dark form i'm just showing the elite dungeon reward shop right now um and effectively right now i already have the elite dungeon chest upgrade which cost me 750k tokens uh, once upgraded chests inside elite dungeons will allow banking and always grant the 20 percent double loot chance on bosses I own the Magma Golem pet. Alright. It's not like me to buy stuff like that. Alright, I can actually override this. Oh, sick. I think that's why I got it. Because it does look really, really cool. And now I can actually have that while I'm doing Elite Dungeons. That might be my ED pet. That's my ED override now. That looks cool, right? And I didn't fun. I really need to get into that habit. I do have to stay south. Otherwise the whirlwinds are going to get me from the north. Prayer ran out there, so that's kind of lucky that I spotted that. Enhanced Evo was such a crazy update, wasn't it, when that came out? It just made you so much more powerful. I think people who actually worked out the stats of that, I think it reduces damage across a fight of like 20% or something ridiculous. Like the amount of, you know, it's just such a powerful perk. Like most of the time you go for DPS raw perks, but Devo's just, the Enhanced Devo is just so powerful that it's just, you want it all the time. Look at all those up there. Holy crap, dude. We're going to be phasing it in a second, so that's kind of crazy. <sighs> what is that? What the fuck was that? Was that a delayed hit? Or is it because I'm next to him? What the hell was that? All right, I need to go back a bit. Okay, don't stand... Note to self, don't stand MD. Holy shit. Don't stand MD, boys. Anyway, we're going to kill it now. And it's going to be another record, and I can definitely speed this up by about another 30 seconds quite comfortably. So, good stuff. Another personal record. Improvements being made. Defeat. Uh, send us uh, seven times. I need to run again. Every time I son, I run. Every time I son, I run. Son, I run. Son, I run. All right, Waspy. That, that's kind of nice to know the specifics. So, with Dark Form, there is a 20% chance to bind with ice spells for 9.6 seconds. Right. I mean, that pretty much means then every single time you're rotating out, you've pretty much got 100% uptime on one target with uh, with binding. Or very close to, anyway. I'm just going to build here. I should have time just to casually get this. One. Middle pillar, two. Three. Four. Mine's going down. Corruption going out. Onslaught going out. Boom! 
That's the rotation. Fuck yes, man. Yes, that's it. That's it. Uh, hello? What? Oh my god, it's fucked up. The animation fucked up uh, from a disruption spell. No way we're doing this now. Just lost so much damage. No, there it is. Oh, I was a Lunar spells, mate, because my disruption shield didn't go off despite me clicking it. Alright guys, so I found out something recently where... If you use, let's say, Spellbook Swap, because that's probably what you've got on your bar if you're using, you know, Ancients or Normal Spellbook for PVMing, etc. Like any content. This actually applies to various things, to be honest. If you have the runes available to cast Lunar Spellbook, which you can find in the Skilling tab on the Normal Spellbook, and for Lunar, it requires Cosmic, Astral, and Lore. If you click the Spellbook Swap, it'll then go to your Lunar Spellbook, and you can go to the Combat tab, and you can apply Spiritual Healing and it'll extend the lifetime of your familiar by 20%. Uh, yes, just got another new personal record, 925. Again, just a three cycle, still working towards that two cycle. Not sure whether I'm going to hit it with this gear and without four tick or attacking, but yeah, definitely will once I get a melee build set up, uh, and that is the next step in terms of progress, in terms of actual gear and, and gear progress, but still going to keep chilling and making a bit of money and just keep practicing really uh, on the mage front just for now until i buy that until i buy some melee gear and i'll come on to that in the next in the next clip or video i am getting really unlucky on the loot front though i'm not gonna lie i just went from like a 32 mil to a 39 mil chest again so that's only like a 7 mil 7 mil loot I i've not even reached 10 mil loot yet on a run um but i think 10 mil obviously is fairly lucky but yeah, I've always been under par at the moment, so hopefully big scale drop incoming. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Oh my god. I was literally just about to go in hardcore and there's a high chance I was going to two cycle that. I had the middle pillar, middle crystal down to 53k and I was getting into the rhythm of just constantly ice racking. And yeah, I actually, very high chance I would have made that. Close, close, close. If I vund it before, I can definitely do this. Like, I'm so, so close to it, to be honest. Oh, yeah, by the way, I just wanted to point out I actually got the worst possible ancient scale drop once again. Four scales. Good times. <laughs> I'm pretty certain the only place where I'm lucky on this game is Virago. Oh, no way! No way, guys! I've just got the pet! I've just got the pet! Ah, I've just realized what it is. Oh my god. It's for, it's the Dungeoneering pet drop. Okay, so it's not the ED Elite Dungeon pet, if there is one here. It's the actual Dungeoneering skill pet. Alright, okay. Not, still, still, pretty damn awesome, guys. Pretty damn awesome, because I, there's, yeah, that's pretty damn awesome. I'm not sure how much, how much XP, you know, I've done in Elite Dungeons, but not that much, I guess. So, extremely lucky there still, I think. All right, so I can actually see it in my invent. You know, I was completely clueless there. So I actually went into my invent. So I've got a uh, Geordie pet. I've no idea what this looks like, actually, um, to be honest. So I have a funny feeling what it's going to look like, but let's, let's let's inspect it. Congratulations, you've unlocked the pet Geordie, uh, the Dungeoneer pet. So it turns out it's actually fairly common um, at Elite Dungeons to get the Dungeoneer pet because it's based on the XP drops. So the amount of times XP actually drops which, in the case of Elite Dungeons, quite often, every time you kill a mob. So, I just got a new personal record. Again, though, not two cycle. Um, yeah, really struggling with the gear without uh, four tick. But, yeah, still getting faster and getting consistent kills. Looking forward to, though, when I can knock off four or five minutes off these trips. Alright guys, I'm going to end the progression of today's video there and just explain my current goals before uh, closing. Uh, that's going to be 100 Elite Dungeon 1 kills and Solak kills more than likely, as well as building and learning a melee setup. And as you can see, I'm kind of struggling to get that two cycle milestone uh, with the current mage setup that I've got. So I think I'm just going to start investing straight away into the melee setup, start building it. Next video is going to go through the entire perk combinations that I'm applying to the loadout. 
it's going to go through how the new greater abilities and mutated abilities uh, impact and change the rotation and it's going to go through me learning those new rotations and the new kind of meta with melee and me then applying that to elite dungeons one to secure a two cycle comfortably at that fight and knock off around four or five minutes from my current personal record so that's all coming up in the next video thanks guys for watching today make sure to give it a like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one